Four matches, four wins, first place, something that hasn't happened since 1981. Botafogo has won four straight matches. It has a chance to make in that five straight matches in the Brazilian round against Corinthians this Thursday. This brings a total of 14 unbeaten games, 14 matches without knowing what a loss is. Botafogo is playing really well right now. And against Atlético Mineiro, a team that has all the chance, all the chance in the world to, to fight for the championship. And Botafogo came in with five substitutes. Botafogo did not have Marçal. Botafogo did not have Rafael. Botafogo did not have Cheche. Botafogo did not have uh, Carlos Eduardo. Botafogo did not have Chiquinho Soares. So five starters and, you know, Luis Castro and the, his assistant, uh, Vitor Severino, which was commanding the team uh, on the side of the pitch because Luis Castro got a red card in our previous match. He uh, he said the Botafogo doesn't have starters. Botafogo doesn't have substitutes or reserves. Botafogo has a squad and a group of players that whoever is doing best at that time will play. And if some players need rest, whoever's second best will come out and play. And that's exactly what happened against Atletico Mineiro. And that is what's going to happen for the remainder of the season. Botafogo is in three different competitions. And it's very important to be strong in all of them. And some people were almost chanting a loss against Atletico Mineiro just because we didn't have those five players. But man, what a match did all of those five substitutes have. Di Placido played really well. Gabriel Pires. We need to talk about Gabriel Pires. What a master class of a performance Gabriel Pires had against Atletico. He was physical. He had passes. He had an offensive mindset. He was the perfect midfielder in that match. And he saved Botafogo from almost a sure goal. I mean, inside the 18, almost at the six-yard line box, 1v1, Gabriel Pires went ahead and got that ball out of there. And then Mahalo Freitas also exceptional with passing. He barely missed any passes the entire match. And then not, not counting Mateus Asimento and his vision and his smarts when it comes to the play. He saw Victor Sá coming. He let the ball go underneath his feet. Victor Sá opened up to Lucas Fernandes. Lucas Fernandes opened up to G. Placido. Back to Victor Sá that scored a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful back heel that just exploded the Newton Santos Stadium. I haven't heard the Newton Santos uh, explode like that in a long time. Another player that I thought did amazing exceptionally well was junior santos yes junior santos a guy that i criticized not too long ago for for not doing the simple moves not, not making the attacking passes against atletico Mineiro. junior santos was on fire junior santos got all of his dribbling um attempts correct all of them every single one of them Junior Santos had some great passes they almost scored a goal from one of his plays victor Sá kicked it um, just to the left after we scored, almost almost right after we scored. So very, very, very good match from Junior Santos as well. And now the press doesn't have another option but to surrender to the Botafogo way, to surrender to how the team plays and actually put the team amongst the some of the teams that may finish top of the table that may end up fighting for the Libertadores spot, and who knows, maybe even fighting for the championship. And I know it's early, there's only been four matches, and there's 34 more to go, but if Botafogo can keep this up, then things are going to look very, very good. Palmeiras coach Abel Ferreira said Botafogo is the main rival this season. I don't know if he's trying to, to throw the... The, the weight of the, and the pressure of being first on top of the Botafogo shoulders to take that off of Palmeiras, which is a club that's been, you know, on top of the table a lot these last few years and then won championships. Um, Flamengo is having a terrible, <laughs> terrible start. They're 16th on the table right now. And I think if this game between Corinthians and Fortaleza finishes this way, Flamengo ends up dipping into the relegation zone. They won't, they won't stay there. Uh, Flamengo won't be relegated. But it's just something to think about. You know, Botafogo is Botafogo beat Bahia away. Botafogo beat Flamengo away. Botafogo beat Atlético Mineiro. Those three teams right there were teams that people thought that were going to do 
really, really well. And then Botafogo beat São Paulo, which ever since the Botafogo loss, they have started to improve as a team. And they've won every single match, I believe, after that loss um, in the Brasileirão. So I don't think even the most optimistic of fans would have said that Botafogo, you know, would end up in first. But Botafogo is in first. Botafogo is playing really well. And truth be told, that Botafogo is playing one of the better um, displays of football in the country right now. So right now, I'm going to show you guys the goals the Botafogo scored against Atletico Mineiro. Starting with Victor Sa, and this is from the Botafogo TV, straight from Botafogo TV. So if you're not subscribed to Botafogo TV, go over there, subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell so you see all the videos uh, coming out. So let me go ahead and fix that. Victor Sa, go, Mateus Massimento with a very nice uh, play there. Lucas Fernandes to Duplacido, Duplacido in, and Victor Sa. It's a crazy, crazy, crazy go. Beautiful go. The Newton Santos just went nuts after this. The Atletico Mineiro goalkeeper can't believe they got scored like that. Yeah, beautiful goal, man. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful goal. Look at that detail on the um, on the goal. A goal worthy of a number seven, man, which is the number 10 equivalent. What the fuck? Look, look at that in slow motion. Oh, just beautiful. Beautiful. Textbook back heel. Beautiful. Victor Sa once again with the crazy dribbling skills. Julio Santos tries the header, doesn't work. And then the ball just... <laughs> The ball just shows up to Mateus Osimhen and say, here, here you go. Here you go, buddy. Just put it in. It's a beautiful goal. Notice how Chiquinho was one of the first ones to come and give him a hug. That just shows how how the group is together, how the group is focused. Um, that is very good to see. And uh, the celebration there was a straight from uh, Stephen Curry. Uh, Mateus Osimhen says he really likes the, the basketball player from the Golden State and uh, Stephen Curry does that. He scores three pointers. He goes like this. And Mateus uh, wanted to do something similar. If you haven't liked the video, please like the video. Subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. And hit the notification bell so you know everything when I release. You know, all, you get all the notifications about all the videos that I release here on the channel. This Thursday is about the Fogo in Corinthians. The uh, Corinthians and Fortaleza match just ended 1-1. One one, and Corinthians will not have Fausto Vera, which is one of their best players. They will have Jorge Hegedes, which is another very diff uh, very another good uh, player, a uh, very dangerous player. But um, on the form of the Botafogo is right now, you know, player per player, if you're going to put it up on the sheet and say who's a better team, I'd say Botafogo is a better team. Botafogo is gonna be, it's gonna have all of the starters uh, for this match, I, I believe, or most of them. So it should be another win for Botafogo, and hopefully we get five straight wins, get 15 points because the very next game after that is Goyaz, which uh, is arguably a winnable game too. So perhaps six straight wins, but we gotta get through Corinthians first. It'll be this Thursday. I'll be commentating on Twitter, and if I get the chance to do the commentating uh, while watching the game like I have uh, in the previous matches or, you know, here and there, I will try to do so and upload that here to YouTube. Daddy Fogo.